I don't know if, if anyone has noticed, but the world seems to be turning upside down as we speak. And as far as what happened with George Floyd, this is anarchy unfolding before our very eyes. It's unfortunate that a black that a black man, an innocent black man in this case, was murdered by a police officer because he disobeyed police uh, officer protocol. He violated the procedures when it comes to arresting a person. It is actually frowned upon and actually illegal. It goes against police policy to put your knee on someone else's neck until you make them suffocate to death. That's not supposed to happen. But unfortunately, the police officer was a jerk, didn't care, and he, and he thought he could get away with it. But now he, has his, he lost his badge, lost the right to carry his gun, and now he's going to be spending his time, the rest of his life in jail. Or, he's, or should I say a couple of years in jail. Of course, that has been reduced to manslaughter from what I heard. What I also heard is that George Floyd himself wasn't just murdered by a police officer. He already had medical problems and he had uh, alcohol toxicity in his system. But of course, the knee in the neck was what did the fight, was the final straw that broke the camel's back. But here's something that really bothers me about this. When an innocent black man is killed and it makes headline news, people are outraged. But where was the outrage when a black man in Texas shot, a poli pol shot police officers in the head, or should I say in this case, shot a police officer in the head in his car who wasn't doing anything wrong to him? A mass shooting that involves a victim, a police officers as the victims. You know, that within itself was an outrage. And that was, uh, there was of course a racial component there. This story didn't even involve a racial component. I don't think so, at least. But you see, the news always tends to twist the story. And they always assume that whenever a white guy, a white police officer arrests a black man, it's always a racial component. But you know what's funny? You know what I've seen in person before? I've seen black police officers arresting another person who happened to be African American just like him. But you see, of course there was no racial component there. So whenever they assume that a black uh, a police off a black man was arrested by a police officer, they always assume it's a racial component. Well, that's not always the case. What if the police officer was black and he arrested a black man? Does that mean that he was being racist against his own people? I don't think so. He's only doing his job and follow the, uh, the procedures of probable cause, right? But you see, when b black people uh, usually protest when headline news of an innocent black victim makes headline news. And this is almost like a redux of the Trayvon Martin case. The only difference is this is much worse. And they, and they tried to turn this into a race-baiting uh, issue, but it wasn't. They also, when as, CNN also tried to go as far as to present George Zimmerman as a white guy, knowing full well that he was a Puerto Rican, and he murdered an innocent 17-year-old African-American kid. So let me ask you this question. In this story with George Floyd, where does the where where do you draw the line here? Two wrongs don't make a right. The police officer was not right for killing a black man by putting his knee against the person's neck to the point where he couldn't even breathe. That wasn't right. He violated police officer procedures and he violated uh, police, uh, law enforcement protocol. You're not supposed to do that, and that's not how they train people to arrest uh, uh, a suspect or a culprit. However, when you see black people protesting, it's fine to protest because the First Amendment actually does say the freedom of assembly. But it doesn't say that you have the right to burn buildings, start a riot, start looting, and this and that. And it's already bad enough that us black people look bad in the mainstream media and Hollywood makes a fool of us. And it's also bad enough that we turn ourselves into the laughing stock of the internet through world star hip hop. 
When I see world star hip hop and these violent black people beating each other up and making themselves and, and fighting with each other like a bunch of Stone Age Neanderthals, those aren't black people. All I see is a bunch of niggers. Yeah, I said it. I'm a black man and I did say the word. I hope that's going to get your attention. Because as I do recall, we already make ourselves look bad and we're making ourselves look even worse by burning down police stations and burning down businesses like Target and other sh grocery stores. Or, 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 or the list goes on and on. So where do we draw the line here and what purpose does this serve? You know what's actually funny? I noticed that black people tend to protest when an innocent black kid dies or when an innocent black man dies. But black on black crime is at a much higher rate than police brutality against bl towards black people. Us black people, we ignore crimes in our own communities. But when a white person does it, oh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be persecution time like it's the Inquisition. So with that being said, I don't get it. Two wrongs don't make a right here. So who's the bad guy? The police officer or the protesters who are burning down buildings? Want to know the answer? My answer is, I don't know about you guys. My answer is, everybody's the bad guy. Everybody. And it's not just black people protesting. It's people of other nationalities, from Hispanic to other minorities. The list goes on and on and on. But nobody's the, the good guy here. Everybody's the bad guy. So that's just as bad. They're just as bad as the police officer who murdered an innocent black man. I mean, even, I mean, even the police officer who was uh, violating protocols by putting his knee and making the the, the arresting person uh, victim uh, um, suffocate. The police. One of his fellow colleagues even told him, "Like you're not supposed to do that. Get your knee off his neck." But he did listen because he didn't care. Of course, he's not going to get away with it because he'll be serving some time in prison. The judge has already ruled this, from what I've heard. So with that being said, nobody's the good guy over here. And this is only, you see, with all the stigmas us black people face, you're only proving that stigma to cut. That stigma has already come to fruition. And it's and you want to know it came to, why it came true because they were expecting us to retaliate like this. I mean, it's and and the system is stacked against black people anyway because they get a longer prison sentence for the same crime a white person committed. You know, and I, even if they've even if they didn't commit as many crimes as the other white person did or whatever it may be. So really, I'm I'm sick and tired of this. This is nonsense. And I I understand to a uh, outrage, but the the it says the the First Amendment says the freedom of the press, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, and freedom of assembly. Key word is assembly, not the freedom to riot, and loiter and l start looting everywhere. And 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 people still wonder why they call us niggers to this day. Because of these disgraceful behaviors right here, and I, and I'm and I'm fed up with this, and I'm I'm embarrassed and ashamed as a black man, really, that I have to see my my people acting like that. I may not be African American, but I'm a black man, and I consider African Americans, I consider them like my kin, really. And I'm and I'm done with this. Really, I'm very fed up with this. And, you know, people blame, like, you know, liberal media. It's not just liberals, man. It's every mainstream media outlet. Of course it's going to be, uh, uh, what's it called, um, a race. I mean, of course it's going to be a race-baiting topic. Because, every, because people make a big deal out of race. Because America, of course, is known as the most race-conscious society in the world. But, you see, people don't judge by the actions of someone's motives they judge by the color of this and it's very very nerve-wracking that this has to continue like this so everybody's the bad guy here nobody's the good guy in this in this scenario 
all the protesters are bad guys and they all deserve to be arrested for vandalism, uh, arson, arsony, list goes on and on. They deserve, each one of them deserve, who participate in this kind of thing, deserves to have, um, uh, what's it called, um, charges stacked against them. These aren't fake trumped-up charges. They deserve that. And they probably deserve to be in the... And you know what they should have done? They should have waited for the sentencing, then laughed at him for being behind bars. Because because the thing is, we could have had the last laugh for uh, because, we, because justice would have been served, but, you know, I understand outrage, but, my God, have some self-control. And everybody who is looting and rioting and burning police stations and other stores on fire, they all deserve to be arrested. Sick and tired of this. Two wrongs don't make a right. And I'm sick and tired of the fact that people in America in particular think that two wrongs make a right. And I've noticed this with the mainstream media. Trump says something racist, he'll be persecuted, like I said, like it's the Inquisition. He'll be persecuted and they're going to badger him and verbally torture him. I mean, this is like the Inquisition that, you know, it's kind of like the Inquisition. Like, you know, they have to, you know, just attack him nonstop. What is this? But if uh, but if a, a Democrat said something racist or very offensive, he or she would just get a slap on the wrist. Even if they're as racist or as mentally backwards as Donald Trump is. So read my lips. No more bullshit. I'm done with this. You know, the political climate is so toxic. It's, you know, um, I mean, the political climate is just polarized around hate. It's to the point where it's becoming toxic for the average day person. It's starting to. But if it starts to affect me in my daily life, I might just move to Canada. I don't know about you guys, but I've had enough bullshit from one lifetime, and there's more bullshit to come.